I'd like to know the timeline with your short that was at Cannes, that went in Cannes, and the feature film, and sort of if there's an overlap in terms of the visual aestheticism, because you do work again with the same DP. Yeah, well, um, I've been working with the same DOP, Constanza Sandoval, for, for a while now. Um, she and I, we are really good partners in crime. We really understand each other without even speaking. We did uh, two short films and the film. Um, actually, um, the film, the path of the film started when, like nine years ago. Um, I was like knocking on doors, taking the script to people. Everyone was like, no, no, no. And then, um, then we started with a producer. We started finding finance, like financing. And it was so hard, um, and it was taking so much time that we looked at each other with the team and we were like, why don't we do a short film? And that's how Monster God appeared. Um, it was in the middle of waiting for the film to be made. Um, with the art director, with the DOP, we really, there were many things and resources that we wanted to test before the movie came out. Yeah. Like before we, we shot the movie, it was like, why don't we try this and why don't we try that? So it was definitely a part of of a similar process. There's like a rhythm. It's like you're, you're lost almost in a, in a, in a dreamscape world. Um, I was wondering, um, was it informed about larger uh, texts or um, that fall into folklore ideas? Yeah, well, um, The Beast originally started as, as, as taking something out of these uh, myths of the region. Um, most of those myths are about these mythological creatures that grab girls or like get them pregnant in the jungle um, if they don't obey their parents. Um, and it's sort of like basically like excuses to, to justify like a girl being taken away or, or, or raped or things like that. And that's very common and there's like all over those kind of myths about like this, I don't know, tiny man, you know, that appears from the trees, hey, and and if you give like tobacco to him, like he will not, like things like that. And so that was, I think, the the main, the main inspiration for the beast. This beast that is the, like the spirit of evil man, which is actually like just a summary of all those other mythological creatures that already exist in real life, yeah. weirdly, that are way weirder than this beast. Um, Pacing of the film, it's so it's. The way you nourish the, the the narrative beats in a way, like like I, I felt really as if I was in a trance watching this and, ex and ex living it through the character's eyes. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, well, I really like when I whenever I do something that evolves around the ambience and the sensations um, to feel that it's a trance actually, like to feel that. Um, it's like getting your 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 feet into the mud and it starts covering you. Um, and sometimes I like to say that that what I try to do with with the editing of this film and of Monster God is sort of like um, you start flowing through a river and you start seeing things and it starts happening. It only you only enjoy it if you let yourself go. <laughs> if you're like demanding the film the things, maybe maybe it's not your cup of tea, but. But I feel that the spectators that, that could like let go and enjoy the ride, there is something about it that does feel like a roller coaster that I really like. That it's not just like, oh, I understand. This is this and this is this and this is this. Maybe you're like, okay, what do I feel? Like, oh, this person is weird. Like this, da, da, da. And, and like this, this intention to, to put all the subjectivity of the perception of, of, of how we see the film onto this main character um, and her confusion and her moment in life and how she feels like separated from everyone else around her and how she sees things because maybe for example I don't know um, maybe the house is not so creepy mm -hmm. but that's how she sees it mm -hmm. um, maybe the mist wouldn't be there if it was like more objectively uh, shot but in that sense I, I guess that it feels that if you kind of make it all like be flowing together um, it makes uh, it's like diving in uh, onto the ambience like fully. I quite like just like simple shots, like um, a, a well lit, uh, a dimly lit town with with like strong lights protruding from from like windows and um, I, like it's so atmospheric. Let's talk about the the, the um, sound. Uh, there's a, there's the organ music. There's a, 
creature and insect sounds like how, how important was sound design or sound like writing sound into the screenplay how did you think about sound um, before even shooting um, I I did write sound in the screenplay but it was that was not uh, that was not it I think that that we did we did do a lot of job in the sound design I worked with Mercedes Gaviria uh, is a uh, Colombian sound designer that lives in Argentina and she and I have already worked with Monster God yeah so I already knew that that we would like sit down and start talking poetry like oh yes and and so yeah the fading trees with the wind and the footsteps that are rhythmical and get you enter into a hole of darkness and despair and she's like yeah and so when we speak that like she always finds a way of um, she always finds a way of translating that and also she I realized with the short film that we understood each other like I don't, don't like like loud sounds like I like very deep sounds and the texture and she was like yeah me too and we both really enjoyed generating like very busy um, sound situations like very baroque like filled with elements and you have like there's not no no real silence ever it's like this and so we like really wanted to dive in into the musicality of the diegetic sound and the follies and and yes yeah, so we did a lot of work with that and luckily I worked with her and she's awesome and, and she could translate everything that we were saying yeah so let's talk about the exploration uh, of this character through relationships and through uh, the, the having a pre like there's all these presence of people or things or elements that are around her that either exist don't exist so um, what was your thinking process when you were sort of like um, adding those layers to the character well the idea was that this main character was in that moment in life in which you're not an adult you're not a child um, but you feel you're an adult but still you don't have the tools in the toolbox to uh, manage anything so it's, it was just a moment of, of pure fear in her life that made her be separated from everyone else, like there was a glass between everyone. So that's why, that's why she really can't understand with anyone or can't relate mm -hmm. correctly to people, can't really interact um, until, well, until the final change in the end, we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. But, but there, it's very rare the moments in which she lets her guard down. And that was for me uh, uh, important for the construction of the fear. It also has like some autobiographic uh, things to it uh, from a specific moment in my life. And so, so for me, it was interesting that way to to make her like just be walking on the street, just like looking at everything, and everything was so far away from her. Mm -hmm. she, she's very much absorbing um, things and not really making sound like very specific choices or at least not overtly um, I, I like the rapport that she has with her her aunt um, one thing I found particular in the in the hostel or hotel setting is there's a there's like this image of Elvis and he's in he's like he's like covered up and I was thinking of like the patriarchal society that she's that she's in the the, the cat calls and all this all this violence that she lives with I, I, I was thinking of her aunt as somebody who sort of like figured it out. Like she's very protective of her boundaries, but also like this evasive uh, um, invasion of like religion and and, and these uh, other male figures. So, um, was is this some kind of a, a response, or a, did you want to insert this idea like patriarchy is 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 obviously something that's. Uh, um, uh, a microaggressive to this character throughout her life and like that she can somehow pair off with with a family member who sort of like figured it out and like no you have to protect yourself and essentially create boundaries or barriers or protective layers yeah definitely uh, not only not only the, the necessarily the patriarchy but absolutely everything because all society responds to that um, it was it was more of like not so much of like let me rephrase this. It yes. was more like um, the ants already know that it's a fucked up world, and the ants already knows that 
that outside there is chaos, there's oppression, there are people that are gonna come and say this and do that and and it's just, I don't give a fuck about them, I know who I am and I'm standing here and this is my table and I will have my cup of whiskey or whatever and and I guess that that's very opposite from, from Emilia in that sense and yes there was like this, this intention of this like sort of oppressive like feeling of things that are going towards her yeah like what are what are some of the ideas that that are sort of percolating in your head and what, what, what do you want to venture into next um i have a lot of ideas um i would like to start i would like to shift a little bit the kind of movies that i do and and do a very different second one okay that's my goal um of course i feel that i will never lose like this dark ambience kind of uh, point of view, but maybe I would aim for something a little bit more classically narrative. Okay. Um, because I feel that I feel that I yet need to explore all the possibilities that I can do, and that that will make me a better filmmaker in the future too. Um, but I also have some some uh, authoral. Uh, I have a, an authoral project that I'm waiting for the right moment mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, so I guess that just between that, I'm also working as a script writer, so um, just between that, I'm just trying to be the best filmmaker, or at least the truest filmmaker that I can be in the years I have in this earth before my imminent death. Um, well, hopefully you have a lot more in the tank. Than hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.